You're making a film of me. <laughs> It was in the Khartoum convent that I discovered my love of running. We would play catching each other. So I would run fast, they couldn't catch me. So they used to call me Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> you know. In a way, it took you to another world. It was just being part of the team that was great. Our shorts, the running shorts, were flapping around us. <laughs> You know, we had to be modest. We were the convent girls. My father used to say to me, you have to have the killer instinct. And you don't, Janet. Go on for the killer. And I said, what for? I just love running for the sheer joy of it. The father used to get very angry. Why Janet cannot beat me? With Mary, I never saw her as a big competitor. You know, she's the queen, that's fine. I'm with the school girls, my friends, you know. She's a fun person, but her father is too strict, yes. We'd be standing there, we'd be talking, and then suddenly someone would say, Janet, your father, and there across the field would be my father with his arms like this. And all the men and boys would walk away. <laughs> we were taken to the camp. When we got there, I looked at the grass it was just beautiful. It was not buffalo grass. It was that very thin, springy grass, you know. I thought, this is just beautiful, this grass. Look, everybody. So everyone said, my God. So I ran. I felt wonderful. And suddenly over the loudspeakers came the announcement, Janet Jesudarsson has just qualified for the Melbourne Olympic Games. I thought, what? Because I wasn't thinking of going. I just thought Mary will go, fine. I had no ambitions. And then the next thing I knew, my father came, patted me on my back. Well done, he said. And then he walked off. I thought, oh, okay. For 15 days, you won't be able to tell it apart from Broadway, Pigalle, or Piccadilly Circus. These two girls are from Singapore. They're not in training anymore, having been beaten a few hours ago. A good time for Australian window shopping. If Melbourne had only known, it would have started this sort of thing a long time ago. Olympic Games was a great eye-opener. We would be training in the training track, which was away from the main stadium. I would hear, wow, wow, wow. Suddenly I see flashing past me a huge muscular woman. Whoa, I'd look at them and I thought, I'm like a piece of cotton wool compared to this, this woman. And then I realized how undertrained we were compared to these Russians. It was a Russian woman going. I was in heat one. I thought, never mind. Heat one, do it, and it's finished. <laughs> Suddenly a voice says, You running in this race, honey? <laughs> I turned and I, there was this tall African-American. I said, yes. Inside said, I want to go home. <laughs> the tension builds up, builds up, and then two fall starts. Then I thought, Janet, don't leave the starting blocks. You cannot. And then I took off. As I took off, Leela Rao, the one I could have beaten, went, no, 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 fell across the lane. So I'm at the end. I get there. I have never ever wept in Singapore after a race when I've won it or not won it. I burst into tears. The tears were streaming. It was the emotion of it all, the vastness of that whole experience. One of the officials came running up to me and he said, I just want to tell you, you were beautiful to watch, he said. The others were like horses, but you were beautiful. And I thought, oh, how sweet. I said, thank you. My tears were crying. I was streaming down. I see right across the stadium, Pierre de Coupetin's words, the most important thing is not in the winning, but in the participating. And it taught me a big lesson in life. You don't have to be a winner all the time. You just have to go and do what you need to do. You do your best. 
it went beyond the games for me. It's finding that connection to other human beings, you know. You're never by yourself. And I thought, you don't have to speak the language. You don't have to understand everything. You know, there is a connection. There is a solidarity. They're all human beings. They're all great people. You're walking along, you're talking, and then you see an athlete coming, and they've got these, their badges. So we make sign language. You want to exchange badge? Sometimes we look at the badge and we don't like the colour, we said no. <laughs> you take your leg up, the other leg will follow. So in a way, I've come full circle because then I took up yoga in my 50s for good health because of my uh, experience with cancer. I have learned to be more compassionate towards myself and loving myself. My sister said to me once, is there anything you regret in life? And I said, no, I don't regret anything that has happened to me because I have learned from it. So I love my life. As long as I'm healthy, I will continue to be active and to be there for others. <laughs>